HiSec Buyback offers 90% GDA anywhere in HiSec. Simply go to HiSec.EveBuyback.com, appraise your items, create a contract, and get paid quickly. Welcome to Talking in Stations, a podcast about EVE Online. I'm your host, Abby Rova, here with Nick Bizon today. How you doing, Nick? Oh, it's good morning. We'll see how this rolls today. Yeah, it's a great day. Um, great weekend. Uh, if anyone is here watching us live now on Twitch, um, stop. Stop watching. I'd say go over to CCP and watch the AT17 tournament that's taking place this weekend. Uh, absolutely watching that now. Yesterday and today, uh, fantastic matches taking place. What do you think, Nick? Oh, I got a chance to. I watched for about three hours yesterday, and really interesting. Uh, the the folks they have doing the uh, well narration, I guess, really know what the hell they're talking about, and I, I learned a ton. Plus, just watching it is a lot of fun. Yeah, having um, people like Satonia there on the on the cast and bench, Ithaca Hawk, Misty. I mean, I was today like there's some fantastic people both on the bench, like in the studio, and then the um, like the casters during the match as well. Uh, the, uh, the commentators um, during the match, fantastic, great matches taking place. Really exciting to see. There was a couple like... of there was a couple of upsets, but then. You know, some of the kind of proven competitors, if you will, really showed their stuff. And, uh, you know, I, I just really got a kick out of it. Yeah, I think one thing, um, like I've spoken to a few different uh, team captains or just members and teams that have lost matches. And, like, they're really excited to, like, come back again next year and try harder, try better, you know, improve their compositions, improve their pilots. There's a lot of teams that are as you said i guess you know seasoned alliance tournament experts and then there's a lot of new teams um and you know there's there's some new teams that get kicked out you know they lose two or three matches uh maybe they didn't even make it past the feeders but like i think it's just great to have it back a lot of excitement and um it's just great practice for next year and the year after that oh one yeah thing, oh yeah there's one thing that, yeah there's a couple of the newer ones god i wish i had that pulled up i because I, I don't recall the names but even though they didn't win they had some cr very credible showings and that was nice to see yeah the um i'm just pulling up the challenge or uh, however you pronounce it the brackets i'll post it here in the in the old twitch chat um great to see teams like uh Sakata tendencies right they're a great team that have been doing very well um and then you have like people that would be i i guess kind of the, the 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 presumed winner not not the underdog right um and then they're going out to these underdogs coming in oh yeah, just yeah there they the go match. yeah the uh road capel i expected them to do well and of course they did uh, they're fighting the infamous Turbo Feed or Glory, which, first of all, I love the name. Um, they're out there just, you know, giving it their best. Psychotic tendencies. I didn't expect to see them do that well against the Goon Swarm, but they did obviously win their match fairly handily. But generally, Goons are a little bit better than that. Than, than that. Maybe they just had an off day. I don't know. Yeah, they've, they've done enough... Um enough alliance tournaments i mean it, it kind of depends on how how much of the crew from the last couple of years you know is still playing and, and still being involved but uh like turbo feeder glory went out today they lost their match to uh anthropic thunder great showing by them they've done great in the competition so far and then like we had uh like northern coalition um nc i i expected them to to win and they ended up losing um really really interesting and like watch watch yesterday on the twitch if you can guys uh go watch it now live uh, and come back and watch us on on the youtube re-recording or something uh it's just fantastic fantastic gameplay amazing piloting and as you said the whole uh the whole team and crew working with ccp um 
just really, really good production. Yeah, you know, you mentioned as far as their production, like the uh, on match commentary is, is really spot on, and I like the way that they transition afterwards to uh, the panel that had uh, Suetonia, uh, CCP Swift, and I just forgot the other gentleman's name, but you know, and they kind of do a post analysis quickly of what they just saw and what's coming up. They all know what the hell they're doing. It's really well done. Yeah, sorry, my uh, my internet just had a little hiccup there. Um, so let's uh, let's talk about what's happening in the week so far. So during the last week, obviously, there was a lot of lead up to the Alliance tournament kicking off this weekend. We had a a dev blog come out on. Friday, I think it was, discussing the Alliance tournament starting. We had the ship, um, the prize ships come out and be announced. But one thing which absolutely blew me away is the fact that the kill mails will be uh, generated, obviously, and we'll, we'll see them on, on Z Kill um, because the Alliance tournament does take place on Tranquility. But what's going to happen is that CCP are actually going to make an NFT, uh, non-fudgeable token of of the kill mails, and then they're going to sell them. Well, well, they'll be given to the the NFT will be given to the pilot of of the ship that they killed, and then like I guess the pilot who gets it can can sell them or or trade them. I think I've got the, the page up with some of the kill mills now. Because that's the UUA TAC F4, isn't it? Uh, yeah, that's the region um, in, so in Joe's Joe, space. Joe's that space. Day. Okay, right, right. Yeah. But uh, I just sent you a link there. And, um, I sent you a link in podcast. And this is the uh, website that they're using to track the kill mails and we can see these kill mails so it says there during the alliance tournament kill certificate nfts will be generated for those who die in battle the character who delivers the final blow will be able to kill will claim the kill certificate which players will be able be able to trade and collect so i just like when i blow you up or what's more likely going to happen is you're going to blow me up in the game and you get a little kill mail with all the information, you know, goes to the, the person with the final blow. Um, CCP have partnered with this company. Um, I can't pronounce the name. It's Trezos or something. They they run a like a blockchain where these are going to be uh, kind of collected on, stored, and traded. Um, and so the, the final blow person, uh, the person who gets the final blow, will be able to get this and claim this NFT um of the kill mail and then be able to keep it themselves or uh, I guess trade it and, and the ownership of, of that kill mail will be tracked uh, on this blockchain. It's interesting. Um, I do know that CCP Hilmar, the CEO of uh, EVE Online has, uh, he's always been involved in uh, kind of like crypto. Uh, he's always been interested in, in crypto stuff. Um, and and has like invested in some games involving kind of crypto technology or or companies and stuff. He's he's always uh, been interested in it. So this is just I guess an extension of that. As we've seen in the last kind of year or two, NFTs have become a big thing. Uh, come become quite popular and in, in the mainstream media being talked about. So this is just a way of uh, I, I guess uh, taking his love of crypto and uh adding that into the the ccp game and, and allowing people uh, the, the pilots who get these kill certificates to, to trade them um and there's that kind of that chain of ownership so yeah i mean i i don't i don't kind of it doesn't really bother me i'm just gonna look at the kill on z kill yeah, it's just something new that they're they're trying out, obviously. And, but uh, uh, it's kind of an interesting uh, mix of technologies. Yeah, I think, think it's kind of 
it'd be interesting to see, you know, I mean, they're not doing it just because they can, but they're probably testing to see, all right, what's, how could this be incorporated long-term into the game? You know, that, that's got to be a, a train of thought somewhere. And truthfully, I'm looking at it going, it's kind of cool, but I have no idea how to use it yet. Yeah, I think I think you're right. I, I I wouldn't be surprised to see maybe all kill Oh, not sure if we lost your voice there or not. It wasn't my fault. Um but okay, I see you're coming back. Uh, yeah. Um, but yeah. Just <laughs> yeah, but yeah, I wouldn't be surprised to see kill mills move like I think you were starting to say move toward a tradable item which would be kind of interesting yeah and just being able to track that ownership i mean people pay a lot of money for certain modules certain ships i could definitely see people uh buying the ownership of a of an expensive killer right well now with the well i believe the uh yeah crimson harvest is is officially done but or no hold on or is today the last day so does that mean the 90% loot drops still going one more day? Yeah, I think Tuesday, downtime on Tuesday it'll end. So we still have that 90% drop until then. Yep, so uh, <clears throat> do not come look for me. My stuff does not have any bling, I swear. <laughs> <laughs> What's interesting is it's, uh, it'll be... Uh, impacting the alliance tournament as well because that's that's on uh that's on tranquility right so usually in the alliance tournament the winning team gets to loot the field and they can get some of their modules back or maybe even try and make a bit of money so now with a 90 percent drop yeah when you look at some of the uh some of the ships that were lost were some pretty pricey ships and had some very nice modules on them so yeah, some of those uh, flagships that we're, we've seen coming out now. I mean, wow. Was what, here uh, we go, you know, seven bill vindicator. Oh yeah, I mean minimum that was because there's abyssal modules on there. I think there was a officer damage control or something on that. Was there? Oh my god, yeah. There's a Brins modified on there. Okay, yeah, it's a six bill unit right there so that's the majority of the cost of that of that animal oh man oh well can't i can't get my noctus out there so what the heck <laughs> yeah unfortunately uh people can't just show up that would be amazing though uh but yeah so the alliance storm is taking place guys check it out really cool um and maybe in the future, if you are super space rich, you could like buy the ownership of a kill mail and then prove it to your friends that you own it. I don't know. Kind yeah, of interesting. Yeah, bragging yeah. rights. What the heck? Yeah, exactly. Uh, look, people people pay money for like CCP corpses and and stuff, right? Do you know what I mean? Or corpses of famous FCs, uh, even even like famous pirates. All sorts of uh, characters like Kriba, you know, you, you don't even have to, to, to be a good person or, or you don't have to be a bad person to have people want your kill mail or your corpse. Yep, yep, quite true. But yeah, AT, definitely worth a watch, you know, so be there. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, the other big news this week was on Thursday, we had the announcement of FanFest. FanFest 2022 is coming back. Finally. Uh, I mean, look, it's been a long time coming. Obviously, CCP wanted to do it safe. There's all sorts of, you know, travel restrictions and laws in place about how they can run events. So uh, great to see them actually, like, put in the really hard work and the effort to try and bring this event back to the community. Yeah, I'm, and, uh, you know, I'm looking at it because it's 6, 7 May. So when we've got six months of prep time um you know I'm, I'm looking over the finances going you know because i'd be flying from tampa florida i'm like going all right just got to get my passport renewed tomorrow and then get serious about the finance and uh i think i'm going to try and make it happen this time 
Yeah, I think I have a, a wedding that month. I need to see if I can get out of. I don't know. <laughs> Hopefully, I'll be able to make it. We'll see. But like, thank you, CCP, for like finally putting on this event. I know we had E Vegas there last week, and there was huge attendance at that event. Uh, you know, a lot of people finally coming together and and seeing their their internet spaceship friends after a long time apart. So great to have the the official event back in Iceland. Yeah, and Saturday, uh, just this past Saturday, TIS uh, Matterall came back for a guest appearance, had a number of the CCP folk and Carneris on on a live uh, Twitch that's obviously on our Twitch. Uh, you know, all about, thank God, FanFest is back. And question, they talked about the venue. I guess they're going back to a larger venue that they had. Uh, that They discussed a little bit of the events going on and how they're going to set it all up. And, and it's just, that was the first time I've been excited about an event in a while. Yeah, I agree. I agree. It's the, the, it's the first time I'm like, God, I, I really like, <laughs> I really, really want to go. It's, it's just, I, I guess two years of, of craziness and kind of not doing a lot of events makes people kind of pimped up and just, they just want to unleash it in, uh, in, in the best way they can. And CCP bringing back fan fest is just brilliant. I believe that, um, that interview, uh, Nick was talking about is up on our YouTube now. So if you didn't catch it live on the Twitch, the, uh, it was basically the interview with, uh, Matterall, Carneros and a couple of the CCP, um, community, the, community managers um just talking about fan fest and kind of how they're they're bringing it back and what their plans are for the event yeah it's like a return to normality so yeah and they've got you know you know maybe a few things they've mentioned as far as uh, you know safety and such for you know folks that are concerned and it's like hey let's see how it rolls i mean i'm looking forward to it yeah, it was CCP Goodfella, CCP Dopamine, and CCP uh, Ruffagy. So uh, thank you for taking your time out of your schedule to come on and get us all hyped up for FanFest. Yep. Yep. Okay. There's the arena name they mentioned, uh, and I am not going to butcher that, but uh, so th that's the venue they were talking about. So this will be nice. Yeah, I, I'm not going to pronounce the, uh, or attempt to pronounce the name of the venue either, but it looked fantastic. Checked it out on Google Maps, and from talking to a few people who've been there before, they said it's like a really, really cool place. And the other thing that, uh, you know, in talking to a couple of folks that had <clears throat> attended the uh, Icelandic Fan Fest before, everything's in walking distance. It's not that big of a town. So, I mean, if you don't mind putting your tennis shoes on, you know, everything is right there. So that that's going to be nice. Yeah, that's a very good point. I mean, like the island of Iceland itself isn't that big. Um, obviously, you can like rent a car when you're there. But even if you are not booking a hotel that is like right next door, you're not going to be very far. You know, you, you are going to be, as Nick said, kind of within walking distance or a short little hop away. Yeah, so this is this is good. If you can make it, you know, Check your finances, check the timing. You know, I plan on, I'm looking at spending a whole week out there, even though FanFest was only two days. I want to do a couple days prior, a couple days after. Kind of want to look around. I have never seen, uh, you know, a volcano for real. So you never know. Yeah, I, I absolutely agree. I mean, if you're going to go there, uh, you know, the two days that it's on you're going to probably be like busy doing like at events at, at talks like checking out engaging with the community so if, i think if you're going to travel it's definitely worth booking a, a few days on either side of the event to see the island travel around take in the sights really really nice um I, i've never been either but god i'd love to go to uh to iceland so i think um so that was Thursday that was announced. Uh, just in terms of shows we covered this week, on Wednesday there was a fantastic show with Arcia, uh, Arcia Elkin, who kind of uh, tried to moderate the the Poshman discussion. So we had a lot of, uh, I think there was what seven or eight of you, Nick. Yeah, yeah. Um, <clears throat> the folk, the different Poshman folk. You know, we had Drake Idion on, Opus Magna, uh, Sarah Jackal, 
Tostoevsky and uh, Zeromus. We also had Murray Roth, uh, Rothbardo on. And the, the flow of it was rather interesting because we they started with like initial luminality and just how the different groups, you know, formed, dealt with each other and, you know, what's going on. The only complaint I would have is uh, we had Murray in there from Rote Capel and Murray and his group didn't show up into Potsdam much later. So, I mean, we actually never got to the point where, you know, Murray could, could jump into the conversation well. So there is going to be a part two. Um, I know Arisa was already talking with some of the folks and they're all pretty much willing to come back and basically get that next part. Um, some really diverse opinions. I really enjoyed, uh, I mean, that, you know, just, and I'm not talking about, yeah, there was, it got a little spicy, a little stabbing in the back here and there. But one of the better discussions uh, was when someone was questioning Sarah on her group's association with Imperium and, you know, how kind of that went back and forth and, you know, a very pragmatic, just, you know, decision and, you know, looking forward to or looking forward uh, for the health and survivability of their group and some of the other groups that took exception to that and, you know, thought it was short-sighted and just a good give and take, you know, granted we probably could have moderated it a little bit better or, you know, nudged them. There's a little bit of talking over each other, but good long conversation lasted better part of two hours and, you know, solid, knowledgeable people. Yeah, I was really annoyed I wasn't able to make it, but I managed to catch it uh, in the days since. And I just, I, I think it's a, it was just a wealth of knowledge. I mean, these were people that were there who, um, you, you said it really well, like we, we talk about kind of Eden Com versus Triglavians. I mean, this isn't one group like Imperium versus Fraternity or Test. This is a bunch of stragglers all come together and fighting under this banner for this cause. And then you have all the, the politics of these, you know, two, three, five, seven different groups coming together. Um, so glad it's it's going to come back for a part two. It might take us a little while because uh, there's so many people involved to, to try and actually match up a schedule and a time where everyone's available and as you said like we we blocked out two hours for that show we thought it would be enough it was nowhere near enough um huge thank you for all of the participants involved for giving up their time and coming on and telling us this story we're definitely going to get the the second half of the story um and, and try and finish it off it just might take uh might not be exactly next week but we are absolutely going to work on it because i think this history of Pashvin from like the horse's mouth the, the the words of the people who were there in the fleets is just really really cool um huge thank you to everyone involved for for coming on and and giving us uh, all this like insider knowledge yeah one of the thing that really impressed me about the folks in there or that we had and especially you know no one was able to game out Poshman ahead of time it didn't sit on the test server for two weeks so everybody could go in there and check it out it showed up and they're like, we got to figure this out. And so, I mean, they, you know, the figuring out what it's all about was done live. You know, it was no pre-planned. I mean, a lot of work done by a lot of folks. And, you know, it just, I, I, they, they impressed me as a really solid different, you know, different groups, but all of them pretty damn solid. Yeah, absolutely agree. Um it was it was live it, it came out um I, I think the only thing they really knew was okay it might be coming this tuesday because of an update on cc but like what what was going to come um you know it was just really really good discussion so if, if you're interested at all in Poshvin and you haven't checked out wednesday's show i highly recommend you go it's on youtube already um just brilliant brilliant show um and thank you again to everyone involved for, for helping put that together because it's a very important story. And it's, I think the more of those stories there are in EVE happening, people just don't hear about them and they don't get big enough to be surfaced. Um, so thank you everyone for, for bringing that to us. Uh, we also had a dev blog come out on um, the Friday, the Building Better Capsuleers. 
So this dev blog is actually kind of, uh, we've had these before. It's, it's essentially a rounding up of the quadrant and kind of maybe an introduction about the next quadrant that comes. So as CCP have said uh, multiple times uh, throughout the year, the, the next quadrant coming is starting in November when we're already in November. And the next quadrant that's coming is going to uh, involve a lot of industry changes. And we have a couple of couple of hints of that coming. So we have the gateway quadrant coming to an end in November now. Um, this Building Better Capsuleers dev vlog talks about the new AIR, NPE, uh, AIR, new player experience. This is the, the new tutorial missions. Uh, really, really interesting stuff. Um, so they're looking at expanding that now going forward. Um, so they just touched on that. So like they mentioned a mining, uh, a mining mission. They also Could mentioned interesting. like the, the skill plans, um, uh, you know, the update they made to the skill plans, um, you know, they, they loop back over it here at the kind of this wrap up of, of quadrant three. And part of what they mentioned is in quadrant four, we're going to see being able to take a, a ship fitting and drag it right onto your skill plan. And it'll tell you what you're missing and what you need. And that I think is going to be, you know, it sounds funny, but I'm so used to two ways ago of doing my skill plans that I'm having a hard time adjusting. So this is one of those quality of life improvements that I think is going to be uh, beneficial to a lot of us. Yeah, I absolutely agree. And I think it gels very well with the, the milestones they put into the new skill plan. So like those five different milestones you can fit and it could be it could be a ship hull, it could be a, a weapon type. So, you know, tech two large guns. Um, It could be a number of things. And this is just, as you said, it's a really nice quality of life thing that's coming along. And then uh. The new skill plan manager role that enables corporations to create, share, and save specialized skill plans with their members. Yeah, I corporate, mean, I, corporation like, level skill plans are, will be in the December, at some time in the December uh, updates. So that's looking cool. Yeah, I really see groups like Eve University karma fleet university right fraternity university all these uh big groups that take in and deal with a lot of new players it's going to make their managing so much easier because now you can just take a newbie and be like what ship you want to fly oh you want to fly a nice frigate here's your skill plan for the frigate here's your fit for the frigate uh you know boom job done all in one Uh, they're also going to be working on the, uh, like helping new players find uh, corporations better. So this is something they also talked talked about a few times in the past. How they want to make it easier for like corporations to connect with new new pilots and new pilots to connect with corporations, and also the different uh, like categories that you would want to be in. Like you know, I'm a corp that does mining. Uh, or I'm a corp that does PvP, or I operate in null sec. So, like a better way of, I guess, just surfacing these and and having it link up better. I don't know how they're going to do it. Um, yeah, I know they have matching a new player's interest, short and long term, with what corporation or group would fit with them the best is that it's a tall order, not easy. But uh, I, I'm glad they're stepping in that direction. Yeah, and before, I mean, uh, I know you could set up a corp ad and say, yes, I do PvP, but I mean, how, how active or how much PvP that corporation does is kind of up for debate. It would be very cool if if a corporation who says they do does a lot of PvP and then you check their killboards and they don't, if they could like flag that somehow. You know, like you have to kill like a certain ISK value per month to like keep that flag. Maybe for the mining people, the industrials, you'd have to do a certain amount of industry per month. And then you like surface higher in that list as like an actual industrial corp would be cool. Yeah. And, you know, as long as it's, <clears throat> I like what you're, where you're going with that. Uh, the only caveat I would give to it is 
if you're building a new core, you know, it's going to be hard to get that first couple people. But still, those are generally, from my experience anyway, are made from personal relationships that you've either made in game or prior, uh, you know, to get that started, to get the ball rolling of your own little core of whatever flavor you like to play. That's a very good point. Maybe maybe it doesn't have to be based on total amount mined or total amount killed. Maybe just like as a percentage of their activity. So wouldn't it be cool if you could pull up in your corporation board stats that say you spend 80% of your time mining this last week or month and you spend 10% of your time doing PVE running sites and you spend 10% of your time market trading or something. And then they could use that and say, okay, you know, this corp obviously does a lot of mining. doesn't matter if there's five guys in that corp or 500. If they spend 80% of their time mining, they're going to be high in that mining category. I don't know. It's a tough, uh, it's a tough order. I, I absolutely don't envy CCP, but I, I look forward to them actually putting in um, better ways to connect these pilots, these new pilots coming in and these corporations, these good corporations doing the work. I think uh, they also touch on the academy. Yeah, yeah, but before we hit academy, if I Go can on interrupt, in. one quick thing, because uh, Bewelder puts in there, you know, no point, no, no point wasting time with new players. They're all going to quit when they can't find out they can never fly a super Titan. Um, I'm going to say you're wrong respectfully um many players that's not their goal you know it, it, a super titan yeah i've been playing a long time can i fly supers and titans sure do i currently own any no because you know what not my play style i can do it if i absolutely have to uh i'm by no means a multi-trillionaire but there is so many other ways that each individual can pick to play eve that Super Titan is not the end game for everybody. Absolutely agree. Um, as someone who can fly capitals, uh, I've only ever flown like dreads and carriers. I've no, no want or need to be flying supers and titans ever. Just never, ever been my deal. And you might say, um, well, it's my goal. Okay, that's fine. You can have that goal. Uh, it's just understand that your goal is not a personal goal. It is more of an organizational goal. Um, I think CCP want to move towards uh, back to back back to when Titans and Supers were not things that were thrown around by pilots, uh, kind of personally or individually, like frigates and destroyers. But they want them to be giant alliance or coalition sized assets that are used. I, I guess strategically or something, right? Not tactically, but strategically. These are yeah, yeah. And, 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 and back to back to bewildered, dude. I was just reading out your thing because I thought you brought up a good point, a good point of view. I just take a different tack personally. I'm not jumping on you. All right. Yeah, and, and like I, I as a like counter to 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 supers and titans, um, and these huge ships. I mean you could become the best frigate or destroyer PVP pilot, uh, solo PVP or the, the less than 10 small gang community. I mean, you can do so much without ever having to step foot in a super or a Titan. Um, I, 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 and, look, realistic, I, I, and realistically, the way a lot of the larger, you know, those ships are used, it's so infrequent it's like, okay, it's going to be a hanger queen until we really need to break glass and get it out here. Yeah, absolutely. Um, like, people... The use of Titans and Supers, um, as you said, it's just people don't log in and, and fly around their Super like they would their Cruiser. Um, and I don't think they ever should. You know, I, I don't think um, these big ships should be used in, in such a for like it it is amazing when it happens like it's amazing when when someone loses two supers uh cuz they got reverse ganked when they were hot dropping right that's always amazing to see but that is such a small percentage 
of the amount of supers and titans that are even out there. As you said, Nick, they're mostly hanger queens until, you know, a, a giant coalition needs to move space or take over a thing. Or I just, I don't like that mentality of I'm not like, 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 uh, like Eve is an end game. You need, you need to get to the super or a Titan to be level a hundred and that's your strongest character or something. Yeah. It's one of the things I like about it is in Eve, you define your own end game. And if there's, you know, 30,000 people concurrently logged on, I'll pretty much bet you there's uh, 28,000 different ideas of what end game is. So good, good community for that. Anyway, I think we beat that horse enough. Hey, what happened with the Academy revamp? Yeah. So uh, just like <laughs> with regards <laughs> finding corporations, I think they've been doing a really good job on this Eve Academy, like expanding to it, constantly adding new videos, new content. I think it's 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 a really great resources and like I'm really excited to see them keep going with it and they haven't just completely forgotten about it. You know, it hasn't been left by the wayside. It's they've constantly updated it now and, and they are uh I, I know they have plans for, for more stuff that they are updating. And what's nice about the Eve Academy is like this isn't all CCP. Um this is CCP engaging with people in the community to write these articles to help get this content together. What works, what doesn't, what's important, uh, you know, what should be in there, what do we need to focus on to help the new player. Um I I do know uh for instance um Ashy um, from Ashy in Space and from Fox Holders had a, had huge, huge help in help helped CCP in in writing and, and getting that academy off the ground, uh, along with a lot of other people. So it's great to see them keep working on it. And I think if I had Eve Academy back when I started Eve, I mean, I probably would be in a Super or a Titan by now. Who knows? <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's great. I really, really like it. Um, Sorry, I was just messed up on the uh, thing there. But the last piece on that that I um, is they have a final career video coming out in November, I believe, uh, which is the PvP focus kind of career. But one of the other things they just mentioned real quickly, but I think is going to really help newer players and some of us older players that really ain't that good is a selection of a particular type ship or ship type for a particular job because that's always a question in eve is you know what am i i need to do x what ship and fitting and how do i do that but they're going to help try and move players to learn how to uh you know select a ship for a job so i was just reading some of the chat they're trying to get caught up um Yeah, but Willer, I just think it's it's just a completely different kind of game. Uh, just to knock it on, it's not World of Warcraft where you can't get the max level. I mean, you can absolutely get the max level. It's just not going to be easy because it shouldn't be easy. Yeah, it's a, uh, know, that, that's part of that old the old adage. And I don't want to sound like a bitter vet because I'm not. I'm still rolling. I'm I'm like Eve poor, but I still like the game a lot. You know, there's. There's just more to us. Mm. Speaking of having more to it, did you see the new merchandise on the Eve merch store? Oh, yeah. I was so happy to see this go up. So uh, for those who didn't see it, we had a lot of merch, uh, new merchandise, new graphics, new designs dropping on the on the Eve merchandise store. Along with that, we had a new uh, it's print on demand service uh, for the EU. So uh, before there was only kind of everything came from America, from from Northern America. So if you were like buying it in Europe, the, the shipping charges and like the import fees uh, would really push the cost up. So now they have a, a print on demand uh, section um, for the EU as well. So just to, to give... Um, to, to give 
I guess, easier, quicker access to the items uh, at a bit of a cheaper price because you're not going to be paying that shipping across the uh, the ocean tax. Obviously, oh, yeah. you can still access the store from anywhere in the world. Um, it's not region restricted. Really, really great stuff. Um, check it out because there's been like loads of new additions. Every faction now has like a couple of different designs of t-shirts and stuff. Yep. For those really? of us that want our Concord shirts, we can now get them. So I'm happy. Yeah, I just, for a long time, there was kind of, um, I mean, there was some great stuff by uh, like Rick's Javix designs and stuff that were really cool. Uh, but there wasn't a whole lot of items going on there. So I'm really glad to see them kind of push it out. Um, I wouldn't mind a few, uh, like they have really cool like hoodies with chips on them and mag colors uh, and like Eve written across it. I think it'd be really nice to see just like more of that, more, more variety in those ships. I mean, if they could eventually work up to like every ship in the game, so you could rock your favorite ship. Oh yeah, I I would probably stick a crowbar in my wallet and order something then. <laughs> I was just gonna say I don't think there's any mining barges on it for you, is there? <laughs> well, I don't know, man. If I get an orca with a couple Mackinaws following it, I'm I'm there. <laughs> that would be cool, wouldn't it? Like a little mine, like an arc in the middle, and then like a couple of uh, a couple of hulks or, or something around it, and then uh, like retrievers and adventure. That would be fun. Yep. Um, so, oh, I mean, I guess the other big thing coming out of uh, the game this week was the. <laughs> I'm really afraid to touch on this. Uh, CCP declaring the exploit with regards Concord pulling for gankers. So we had a uh, a very uh, excited member of the community join our, our Discord during the week. He was able to share a couple of uh, screenshots of conversations he had with GMs. And he had approval to do that. So it wasn't just him going rogue either. So don't, don't jump on him. Yeah. yeah. Um, but he also posted um, a, a thread up on, on Reddit that hit Reddit. Um, and more importantly, in that Reddit thread, uh, CCP Paragon actually replied. So you might have heard some stuff. Um, if, if you heard it during the week, basically... Uh, a person, a lot of, a couple of people actually, like, are getting accounts banned for pulling Concord. So, I guess for anyone who who might need a refresher, um, this is the act. I guess the activity of attacking a ship. So you lure Concord's attention away from your actual real target you intend to gank. So uh, just to put that in perspective, if if you were, you know, you're, you're going to be killing freighters on gates when a freighter jumps into a system like, oh, I don't know, Uidema uh, or Ohide or Odin, uh, quite popular ganking systems for freighters now. Um, but obviously he's like, the freighter's going to jump in the gate. He's going to spawn kind of 20 kilometers off the gate. Um, and if you go to gank him, then Concord will immediately respond to that gate and start blowing you up to stop you. But what gankers like to do is they'll take a, a sacrificial ship, maybe, you know, a, a coveter um, or, or like a little frigate, um, and they will gank it in a different part of the system to kind of spawn Concord over there. So just before they uh, attack their freighter, so that Concord will have to like fly from the other side of the solar system to the gate instead of being able to like spawn immediately on the gate. Uh, this gives them a bit of extra time to like do the gank um, and be successful. So some people were getting uh, banned for that, uh, weirdly enough. Because uh, it's something like gankers have kind of done for a long time, um, never really had any issues. In the reply, uh, 
the GM pointed out this known exploit. So the CCP has a list of like known exploits, known and declared exploits. Obviously, to to do one of these is a is a ganking. Is a ganking um like, sorry, it's not ganking. Doing one of these exploits is a bannable offense. And it's I've got it up on the screen right now. <clears throat> Excuse me. You know the exploit notification delaying Concord's response, and. And, and, you know, I'm kind of at a quandary because probably for the last seven, eight, nine plus years, I've known this is don't do this. OK, don't pull Concord, you know, and I can't claim I read this particular exploit notification, but, uh, you know, committing a criminal act and delaying Concord response for an extended period. And it goes through the different, you know commonly involves leaving an empty ship or drones in space that Concord focuses on before dealing with an attacker. Also consider an exploit to commit a criminal act to prevent a ship loss by Concord by any means. And they go through it. And where I got confused is in reading uh, CCP Paragon's response where he's mentioning... <clears throat> Moving Concord off grids, not something we historically had problems with. Uh, no one should be banned for this alone if you hand ZM me, okay? But on his point number two, it's been pointed out correctly here that Concord has a set response times, but depending on the security status and, of course, whether or not Concord's already in system, whether they're already spawned, or if it's going to be a fresh spawn. And he mentions that... Uh, Manipulating this mechanic still retains the normal response times, given the factors of whether or not in system, whether or not on grid. Uh, pulling, as discussed here, does not affect the response times. Well, if it doesn't res reflect the response times, then why is it in the known exploit section? So I'm not sure if maybe he just worded it funny or if I'm reading it funny, but... Don't do it, okay? <laughs> don't don't take the chance of getting yourself in trouble until we get and, better and clarification. I, yeah, and, and if you did do it and you think you were uh, wrongly punished or wrongly banned, reach out to CCP Paragon. Um, you, you can do that in multiple ways, guys. So, um, I mean, I, I think he has a Twitter. You can hit him up on Twitter. You can actually just put in a ticket and ask to, you know, whoever GM gets back to you, you could ask to be, like, escalated to CCP Paragon and, like, quote this, what, what he's saying in this Reddit post. But obviously, I think there's something, like, there's something maybe that gankers can do that could give them an extended period of freedom from Concord. So... Uh, I, I, I don't know. We are actually reaching out to a couple that we do know to try and uh, get clarification from them and see if we can get them on the show this week. Uh, is, is there something extra that's happening um, that, that instead of giving them, let's say, a 20-second response time and a 0.5, that uh, they get 25 or 28? Um, but I, I think right now the big takeaway is it's not what it was said during the week when this first came out during the week. A lot of people thought that, oh my God, now killing a venture to get Concord off the gate before I do a gank will get me banned. That's not what Paragon is saying. I think a very important word that he used was, um, let me find it exactly here. Sorry, two seconds. Oh, I've got it back up on the screen for you. Um, delaying Concord's response for an extended period of time is not allowed. So at, at the end there of the of uh, kind of point three at the end of the line, delaying Concord's response for an extended period of time is not allowed. So I think maybe there's an, an extra exploit, an extra bug, an extra way of doing it that someone's worked out that gives them extra time and is like artificially delaying Concord's response. Maybe that's what I think it is. Or maybe that's what I think happened during the week that led uh, one, two, or a couple of people to have their accounts banned. 
But uh, I do know, like, I know for a fact in the known exploits, when they talk about it is considered an exploit to commit a criminal act and prevent ship loss to Concord by any means, uh, an example of that would be if you and me are in high sec, Nick, and we're on a wormhole, and let's say you accidentally warp your machina to a wormhole in high sec, I kill you in high sec, and I immediately jump in the wormhole to uh, to avoid Concord killing me, right? That is a bannable offense. That's that's uh, uh, that would be a way of like you're you're not allowed to avoid retribution from Concord. Um, yeah, and I think I, my my biggest takeaway on the end, and I agree with what you're saying, my mind immediately goes to well, if it started in high sec, you're going to get a criminal flag. I know you can't jump a gate for a minute, but can you? Yeah, you can jump more mobile flags. <clears throat> but but the last line he puts in there right before the thanks everyone is the one I'm waiting on is the, this is how I understand it, but it's been a while since we've had to address this and I'll see about getting some updates on to clear this up because I read it and I got confused. So, uh, and I thought I had a good understanding. So I'm going to wait, just chill my heels and, uh, you know, wait for the man to get an update to us. Yeah, I think that's actually the, the most sensible advice here is if you are grabbing your pitchfork, maybe put it down for a minute uh, and we'll wait and we'll see what clarifications we get from the, the head GM or something. And if you or anyone you know has lost a ship in the last week and has been banned or or given a, a short-term ban for, for doing this exploit, it's absolutely going to be worth it putting in a ticket. Quoting um, what CCP Paragon said in that Reddit thread and just saying, hey guys, can I get someone to check this out for me, please? Um, you know, it never hurts to ask. Um, just ask, because uh, obviously there's some confusion and I'm confused. All of us here uh, at TAS are quite confused about this and we are also trying to get like further clarification on, on what exactly caused this ban during the week or, or this to come up again. Yeah, sucks, but hey, look, sometimes things happen. Um, hopefully, people who were uh, doing nothing wrong and weren't breaking the rules get on band quickly and, and they can go back to playing. And CCP customer service is actually really, really good. I've always had great interaction with them, so I, I trust they'll, they'll do the right thing. No, um, uh, BKM in, in Locus, his freighter has web alt. Yeah, that web alt... You know, obviously, if you're in high sec using a web alt, now I have made this mistake where I just brought on one of my other characters. Oh, I'll just web my freighter to get it rolling. Um, make sure you activate a duel first because I did it without it and I got my, myself concorded. Uh, so, yeah, activate a duel first. And yes, you will get the, uh, the limited, not limited engagement, what's the word I'm looking for, where you can't jump through the next gate. But, uh, weapons timer so be careful um someone actually very good question there in chat as well are suspect pilots prevented from docking so you are prevented from docking for like the first 60 seconds when you have that um weapons timer then you can dock so if 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 you go yellow you go suspect you can that's not going to stop you docking uh, you uh, an example of that would be if i looted your can or your wreck uh, and i went suspect to do it um i'd be able to dock up oh uh bk mentions yeah yes friendly fire obviously allowed in core i'm not sure i assume that would negate that in my particular case my two characters were in two different cores. Oh, and I thought I was safe because I had them in the same fleet. Eh, not really. Yeah, I still get myself blown up from time to time because I forget exactly to uh, initiate jewels. So, um, Quadrant 3 uh, coming to an end now, Gateway Quadrant. Um, we do know Quadrant 4 is coming out this month. We do know that's going to contain a lot of big, big changes to industry. Um, you know, as we've heard from CCP, they're going to talk about, you know, Rourke will balances, Orca rebalances, mining ship rebalances, uh, 
compression for Moongoo, compression for um, gas. These are uh, quite big anticipated changes. Yeah, that, know, and, uh, that and the, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, throughout fourth quadrant is the, uh, well, to use the full phrase, an end to scarcity as we currently know it. So my guess is, you know, they're going to start loosening stuff up. Um, we had some real lively discussions in the uh, TIS voice on that. You know, we'll, we'll just what does that mean? What do we think? What's that going to do to the different, you know, things loosen up by X percent? What's it going to do to the market? So a lot of, lot of potential, you know, gray areas that we just got to navigate as, you know, things loosen up and as we learn how to deal with them. Yeah, and in that, we've actually had a few little um, little sneak peeks. So uh, as Nick has up here on screen, this comes from HoboLeaks. What we are looking at here is, uh, I, I guess, the new like main um, main image art, right? So uh, when you open up your launcher or when you log in, this like main background image that comes up uh, behind a lot of things and will probably be on the, the blog post. Currently on the launcher, we have that really cool uh, ships flying out and it's like purplish. Um, so, I mean, a couple of, couple of things I noticed straight away in this, uh, I'm sure you did as well, Nick. Do you know something about all those ships in that? Uh... Yeah, they're ore ships. Um, right? the majority of them are and I hope they're not saying go take your ore ships and fly them into the sun <laughs> but you know, <laughs> you know um, but yeah one of the things they mentioned is that you know there's going to be some balance passing for lack of a better term on the ore ships um, you know I'm, I'm a big big fan of my porpoise and my orcas um, sold off all my works a while ago when I got blown out of null sec the last time, happens. Um, it just, yeah, I, I, it's got me curious because why last time I saw this many ore ships on a single pick was when, back when the Orca first came out. I don't even remember that. Wow. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I saw this and like there's been a lot of talk of, oh, like, It'll never come. They'll never rebalance the ships. Like, when is it coming? It's so long away for, you know, I mean, almost kind of two years now. With, or at least the last six plus months has been very intense. But like, when are these changes coming? When are these changes coming? When they said back in like January, these changes might be coming. And when I saw this image, I was like, oh my God, it's actually coming. It's here. I mean, it, it, it's going to be, I, if it, to be honest, guys, I actually think it's going to be like, we're going to get information on Tuesday about it. And if it's not this Tuesday, it'll probably be next Tuesday. Yeah, I'd be surprised if the... <clears throat> I don't think they'd pop up with the graphic, or you know, with the artwork, I should say, if they weren't pretty close. Because, boy, I talk about wetting my appetite. I'm very curious, you know, what the changes are. Um, you know, I've spoke with a lot of, you know, uh, high-sec orca pilots that are the... I'll be generous. You know, the more AFK orca pilots will get out there with a half dozen orcas, throw out some drones and go watch a movie. And we go back and forth because I personally dislike that play style because I'm an active player. I, I like to micromanage freaking everything. Um, you know, that's, that's one of the things It's like, what are they going to do with that? You know, are they going to nerf the bonus on the drones the mining drones coming from an orca are they going to remove the mining drones from an orca and make it be purely an industrial command ship again you know there's just so many possible ways this could go i'm just i'm actually kind of excited about it even though i it, it could absolutely hose me but you know what i'm looking forward to it yeah, same. I'm not a huge miner. I'm really looking forward to it. A um, couple of things there actually just get caught up with in chat. Uh, Brolux just subscribed for four months. Thank you so much, Brolux. That's amazing. Um, thank you for that support. Really means a lot. 
Gerald's uh, said uh, he's had to, he's tried to get many people into the game, uh, attracted to mining, and leave weeks later. Yep, I agree. Mining is like quite boring. I, I don't think anyone should really do mining uh, past their first few days. What? Um, hold it, hold it. No, I'm no, still slow down, here. slow down. <laughs> no, no, no. I mean, if you need to mine a bit of money to buy your first frigate or two at the very start, do it. But I think you should be doing exploration and I think you should be doing uh, some PvE or PvP later on. You can circle back around to mining if you feel like you really want to be um, an industrialist. But I really think people should try a little bit of everything and not just be shoeholed into mining from like the, the first or second week. Oh, yeah, I, I'm with you there. And like Joe says in, in chat, he says he loves mining. Um, and, and he brought up something I hadn't even thought about. Um, it, it, let's just go down the, you know, down the rabbit hole and we're purely guessing. None of us have a clue. But let's just say they take mining drones away from orcas and porpoise. All right. Well, um, you know, they get that one minute uh, timer to where they can't dock every time they, they toss a boost out. Is that going to get, you know, compensate, reduce that or remove it? You know, just, you know, little, little something, something on the, on the backside. So, you know, that's, that's an interesting idea. I hadn't even thought about that, but good call. I think, uh, yeah, we we had a lot of discussion um, about this and like the, the different ways they could take it. Um, I think it all just depends. I would love the Orca to have, I don't know if you do it with a mode switch like the um, like the Tech Tree Destroyers that you can just press a button or you do it with a module that you have to refit or you do it with a module you have to activate or something. But like... I would love if the Orca could have a mode where it could be really strong booster, really agile. So if you're mining in low sec or null sec or dangerous uh, space, uh, so it's like better at doing that kind of dangerous space job, maybe make it quicker, maybe make its boost better, maybe make it um, have a bigger ore hold or something. And then you could have an Orca mode for high sec where, sure, you want to AFK mine and a belt all day, fine, but you have like no tank or you have less yield than a, uh, a, a tech one barge well, or, they, or they something. Already, they already do have less, but that's not the point. I see where you're going with that. BK, yes, they can all use combat drones and Orca gets nice bonuses too. It's combat drones. Yep, it does. Uh, actually, combat orc is pretty tough. Uh, people, people, some some people love uh, dressing their their orca up in like full PvP fit with like combat boosts and, and sitting out there waiting to get um, attacked and then just like murdering stuff back. I know, I know, I know a few people that like take their orcas out on a roam with mining ships, like uh, procurers, all like super tanked with a load of drones. Um, they can really do damage. Yeah. Uh, oh God, I'm not going to be able. The Malvis, uh, somebody break down. Um, changes to the wormhole indie to make it other than garbage. Ooh, if you got ideas on that, dude, uh, drop them into the. Uh, into our discord you got me curious there yeah i think maybe with the um wormhole moons are uh what is it or fours right they're they're high sec moons they're they're the same as high sec so you don't even get like um any low sec uh or or null sec goo which is weird because the pi in wormholes is uh, on par with null sec pi um I think that maybe was what he was getting at there. I'd love to have, love, love to have um, better moon. Like I'm okay with not getting like or sixty four super null sec moon goo in in like every wormhole, but like maybe some 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 low sec or eights or something would would be nice. Yeah, because I when they moved them all to fours, it really killed. You know, from the folks I've talked to that uh, do the J space. Uh, mining or had in the past it's not worth the risk right now you know, for, yep. for what you get out of it when you know someone like me can chill his heels in high sec and get the same thing in relative safety 
as long as code safety is not nearby, you know, um, in high sec. So, yeah, I, I definitely uh, see yeah, that. Yeah, totally agree. He just said there, yeah, even just or eights or or sixteens. I I agree. Even even in a smaller amount. Um, I mean, yeah theoretically wormholes could be safer because you can like roll all your holes and, and lock yourself up in your little pocket but uh yeah, spoiler alert here. yeah people kill you people roll into you uh if you want an example artemis uh <laughs> i hate i hate to call him out here but like artemis the ceo guys of talking and stations he lives in a wormhole he was there mining in his wormhole with his three characters he rolled all the holes beforehand he thought he was perfectly safe um and still a, a little frigate came across him, found him, called a load of friends in, and they murdered him. So things happen. <laughs> yep. That, that Suddenly that R4 moon just isn't that profitable. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, and actually, I think after that um, little mishap, he swapped from orcas to using porpoises uh, and went from hulks down to, like, coveters. <laughs> Yeah, the loss just isn't as bad that that in that case. Which, by the way, if anybody's in the market for any porpoise, uh, just let me know. I'm still building the hell out of them. I love them. I, I think as well, like these ships, um, I really would like to see uh, things like porpoises and orcas be like better used for gas mining in some way because they like hugely increased the amount of gas being used now with industry. You know, they, they should make bigger clouds. I'd love to see... Um, just looking forward to see how they change that and what they're actually going to do. And look, it's going to come in the next. I I don't want to say for sure 100% because we know things could happen in production. Uh, just before they get to the, the final gate, they could discover a bug and need to go back. But I do have... Um, I, I've heard through the grapevine we're going to be getting a blog post this week. Say that, that would be nice. But at the same time, I'm sitting there thinking to myself, the order that they roll it out is going to be kind of interesting. If they roll out ship changes first, what's that going to tell us about a reduction of scarcity? You know, if they roll out reduction of scarcity first, what's that going to tell us about ship changes? And just, you know, trying to figure out the way they're going to roll with it is always fascinating. Yeah, if it wasn't for the fact that they completely changed industry there at the start of the year, I was going to say this would be one of the biggest industry shakeups in a long time. But they went and completely changed industry. So <laughs> it's the second biggest uh, industry shakeup in a long time. It just happens to follow kind of six months after the biggest one ever. But yeah, as I said, I really like guys. I'll be keeping an eye out on Tuesday or or maybe even Thursday as well. Uh, both this week and next week, just wait and see what happens. And maybe if you're lucky, if you happen to be around, uh, you could log in quick and like make a killing on the market because we saw that with the industry changes. When that industry change blog came out, like so much money was being able to be made on the markets by those who could log in that day immediately to take advantage of it. So, uh, yeah, maybe take a day off work on Tuesday if you can, maybe a couple of hours if you're a market trader. Um, the one other big kind of uh, thing that's going on this weekend, so obviously we have the Alliance Tournament 17 taking place this weekend and next weekend. Because of that, we have a Proving Ground event for it. This is really cool. This is just like two-on-two -two cruisers. Really like um, these smaller ships Proving Grounds. Obviously, we had like battleships there uh, not that long ago. Bit expensive, um, but these skins that they're releasing for them really, really nice skins uh, for the winners. So if you are taking part in that proving grounds event, we have a couple of cool skins for the um, what is it? The Kaleri, the Blackbird, and the Arbitrator. Um, oh, and there was a really funny bug have to share this. I'll drop this in the chat in case people didn't see it. So what we have is a incursion taking place within Poshvin. Um, so that shouldn't happen, first of all, for those who don't know. The uh, incursions don't work in Poshvin because Sancha Nation shouldn't be invading Poshvin, but uh, 
Yeah, someone someone forgot to cross their T's and dot the I's with that code. It is fully runnable. Like you can go in there and run the sites. I highly recommend you don't. <laughs> Unless you're just like feeding a, a lot of uh, expensive ships, but yeah, it's it's in the agency. It pops up in the agency. You can see it, and uh, it is there when when you go to uh, the. I'm not even going to try and pronounce that the Cray Vallis, uh region of Poshman. Um, oh my God, Ren is saying in in chat there. People have run some of them. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Ren is a member of the TIS community. He's a huge, huge incursion runner. Loves his incursions. So if he's telling me people are running them, I uh, 100% believe him. And I completely agree with him. Those people must be absolute nutters. Yeah, yeah Nick that has is it up awesome. There. Yeah. So, uh, guys, if you want to go hunting, uh, it might be a good idea to grab a couple of filaments and filament into Poshman. You, you might actually catch some incursion runners. That's just amazing. <laughs> oh, and I'm actually... I'm going to end on one... Um, I, I was going to say sad piece of news, but cool piece of news. I just posted the kill uh, the kill mail into our chat there. This is the ORHP. Respect, honor, passion. Uh, we saw them. They kind of got stirred up in a bit of the news recently with the... Uh, I, I, I'm not going to say not paying their landlords because um, if you ask them, they're not renters, but the, the people that own their space uh, sold their space from underneath them. There was a bit of a backstab, so they are leaving uh, Declan and moving down to... I think they're joining Fire now. Uh, but they lost their keeps there. Um, what's important about this keeps there is that this is actually the first keeps their loss post world war b2 uh slash vietnam whatever you're you know you you call it um but that huge war that lasted there uh over a year is the first yeah um, it's not first keeps like, there. yeah and some folks want to play semantics and go oh, well you know the war didn't end until these keep stars got cleaned up they were related to the war you know, this is the first non-war related, out of the area altogether, completely new thing. So it's kind of a big deal. Yeah, yeah. It, not involving, um, like, any of the people involved in the war. Uh, obviously, there might be a couple of goon swarm pilots on there or a couple of test pilots or something. But this isn't a... None of the big war groups are, are involved in this. And this is really separate, uh, as Nick said. Expensive loss, too, these days. I mean, my God. And a little hard, maybe a little harder to replace. I don't know um, what the... Truthfully, because I'm not into building these darn things, um, you know, have they gotten harder to build? Uh, not really. Um, I think why they would have gotten... Uh, harder to build so to speak or i guess more expensive uh would would be a sorry excuse me just had a burp uh would be market pressure on the materials that go into these being used in other things so uh they might use a lot of pi and now that pi would be used in you know, quote unquote, supers or titans or or faction ships and stuff. So, in that way, it would affect the price like a little bit, but it's not. It's not. Um, well, it it's hasn't not, been touched. Yeah, like you said, it, it, it's not where you're right. You know, like where the ships, the larger ships, that not only do we need new pieces, parts, but here's new skills, new blueprints, and new supply chain. Yeah, yeah, definitely not that level of change. Just there has been pressure on on these goods um, from like a market and sourcing them and moving them um, point of view that would make this uh, a bit more. Yeah, very good point there from chat by 
the person whose name I'm not going to begin to try to pronounce, uh, the price of pie hasn't skyrocketed, but demand has gone up. So if if you went to try and build a keeps there, uh, you're not going to be going and buying all of that PI off the market immediately in one go. You know, you're going to want to spread that purchase out over a month or something and try and try and not spike the price when you just go put a buy order up for like a million units or something uh, we can call them thermal thank you so much <laughs> hey Very thermal kind of thanks man that's a much more uh uh name that's easier to deal with um re re really good comment though Yeah, very good point. They they use a uh, P4 because P4 doesn't have a huge demand, and actually a lot of the demand we saw with the industry changes was from uh, like the lower tier uh, PI stuff. You know, your your P zeros, your P ones. Yeah, yeah. And a, a lot of new PI and and Mungu. Very good point there. Even goons had issues with building keeps. Again, um, I do remember the Imperium saying that, I, I won't say that they were having issues. Uh, they didn't want to go and buy, like if they wanted to plop down 20 keeps there after Pappy fecked off from their territory and finally left them alone. Um, like they weren't going to go and buy 20 keeps there's worth of materials overnight. Even, uh, it, even think, if they had the ready ISK sitting there, there flat out may not have been that much available. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, after the glassing, I hate that term, but but after the destruction, they might have just been in full war mode. Really, really good question. Um, incoming moon goo compression, what will that do to prices and supply? I'm not a market expert. I'm not even going to begin to try and give you an answer because like this isn't, What's that? Like, this isn't legal advice. Don't take it as legal advice, right? This isn't market advice. <laughs> Don't come to me for market advice. Now, what what that's going to mean for the smaller moon producer like myself is, you know, because I'm right now probably got 11, 12, you know, million M3 of unprocessed moon components or moon ore. If I can compress all that and sell it to a buyer you know, it's a hell of a lot easier to move. So the transportation aspect of it is going to get a lot easier. Um, you know, yes, if I refine it, then I've got the actual individual, you know, pieces, parts that can also sell. But some folks that want to purchase in bulk, that's going to be the way to do it. So. Yeah, I, 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 I'm not going to try and uh, give you an answer. I don't know. I think if you're looking for an answer um, in terms of like what this might do to the market, uh, Oz Eve does a great show uh, every Saturday and he has a fantastic Eve community. Um, by all means, uh, ask in there. They're absolutely like market experts. How much would reach the market versus how much would be used in the house? That's a great question. I think... I think anything left over will be easier to move to market. Um, how much is left over? I don't know. I'm not in the big null sec blocks and I have no idea of their quantities or throughput or, or what they're using their resources on. But I think we might see more Moongoo hit markets where before it would have been kept in house for uh, a bit more length of time. I don't know. It's very interesting. There'd be a very interesting dynamic in play uh, over the next kind of month or two as these changes come out, as they hit the server, and as people begin to react to them. I'm really excited. Yeah, look, definitely looking forward to it. I think some of the changes coming up, like I said earlier, they may or may not benefit my play style, but you know what? It's coming. I'm going to have to deal with it. So strap my get strapped into my chair and get ready to rock. Yeah, uh, look, it's it's not really in your control. It's not mind control. We just got to uh, ride the wave, right? But like, I, I think, I don't think they're going to absolutely um, ruin gameplays and game styles. I don't think that's their intention. No, not I just at think, all. Not right? at all. 
I just think everyone agrees that like massive AFK orca mining or what's happened to them over the last couple of years uh, in conjunction with the material or mineral abundance um, had to be addressed. So it's being addressed, and then, and yeah, as we see with the with the re- restrictions of of scarcity being loosened, maybe more minerals hitting hitting the market. It's not going to matter too much if they like nerf the orca and the miners too much because they could make that up. But as you said, by like increasing, like they might reduce, uh, you know the the yield but they might make the yield worth more so in the end you're coming out ahead ah theopolis that's because i'm an eternal optimist you know no matter what they throw at us i'm still going to be here playing because i don't know i i just I'm still, after 14 years, infatuated with this damn game. Yeah, it's it, to me, it's it's never been about the 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 nitty gritty of the mechanics. It's it's about the people you fly with, the the friends you meet along the way, and and blowing stuff up. But yeah, very very cool. Um, so yeah, I think that's kind of all the news. Um, so look, guys, on 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 Tuesday, Artemis did his thing talking about some nullsec stuff. Check it out, I guess, if you're into nullsec. Um, I actually didn't watch that show. Wednesday's show was amazing. Uh, RCA hosting like the the Poshman discussion. If you've any care at all for the history of Poshman, go watch it. It was fantastic, and there will be a part two soon, as soon as we can, where we will try and wrap up the rest of that story for you. Um, and Thursday was a really, really good show at Rundle and, and like the pre-show to the Alliance tournament. Um, some some incredible pilots uh, and casters came on and a huge thank you to those guys for giving up their time uh, like two days before the Alliance tournament. I know they were so busy. Uh, people were catching planes, flying out to Iceland, getting checked in. So thank you for, for coming on and, and talking like AT Talk with us. It was really, really cool. Um Maybe don't go watch that now. Hold off until like after the show because I think I think we should just go raid CCP and watch the rest of the Alliance tournament. Yeah, I'm all set up to do the raid that way. You just give me the word. Yeah, awesome. Um, actually, did you notice as well how many people are watching the Alliance tournament? It's huge. Like, yeah, it's like, over, it's over four thousand. I think I saw it get get to over five thousand yesterday. Um, really, really great show that it's back. Um. Oh, Ren. Ren got enough points for his Galnet. Uh, for his Galnet skin. Oh, Congratulations. Dang. How many points do you need for that? Because I've only got like twenty five thousand so far. Uh, I I don't know. I think they were giving them away for ten k. Uh, although that was the feeders. Um. But yeah, thank you guys for watching. Um. Maybe watch us back during the week when the Alliance tournament isn't on. Uh. Don't forget the Alliance tournament will continue next weekend as well, Saturday and Sunday, where we have like the actual final winner chosen. Um. Ten k, ten k points for your Galnet skin. Nice. I I, I can get one. <laughs> yeah. Best of luck. L- let me know what one you get. Right, oh, we'll there's other it. options as well. Awesome. Um. All right, let's go raid CCP and uh, watch the last couple of hours of the Alliance tournament and spend all our channel points on Galnet skins. <laughs> all right, hey, everybody, thanks so much for stopping by. I'm going to roll our uh, our closing once the boss man tells me it's okay and yeah, get on. the uh, raid rolling. Thanks a million, everyone. We'll see you next week. Um, like, subscribe, comment, join the Discord, get involved in the discussion, all that jazz. Uh, but let's go watch Spaceships blow up right now. That's why we're all here.